Hey, everybody. All right, we're going to wait a few minutes, and then we'll get the show going. How's everybody? Chicago went from minus 10 degrees to 60 degrees in like two days. I, I, I just don't get it. Oh. Hello, everybody. Tonight, we, we, we eat like gods. We are eating like gods and goddess lobster. Woo. And I apologize, by the way, there was a miss, uh, a miss print on the original uh, recipe that everybody got. So everybody in the last few days uh, got the email with the correct recipe, update everything, which by the way, they were very similar, but one, the first one that we sent somehow did feature spinach. And there was a picture of spinach cannelloni, not lobster ravioli. Um, I could blame 50 people for it, but since I own the company, I'm gonna take full blame for it. I don't look at emails. I don't, I just say yes, because I'm a nice person. Yes, that good, yes, absolutely. I didn't look at it. So some of you got the wrong recipe, but everything is fixed. Um, all right, guys, so as usual, if you have any questions, if you have any questions, let's put the question in the chat. So before we start, what do we have? Before we start, we have a few things right here. I have a food processor with a blade attachment. I am done, absolutely done, making fresh pasta by hand. I've given everything I have. I, I pay my dues. If I ever have to make pasta by hand, I'm not gonna eat it. I'm sorry, it takes too long. 30, 40 minutes that I do not longer have. So if you have a food processor with a blade attachment, it's time to take it out right now. If you don't have a food processor with a blade attachment, I hope you do have a stand-up mixer with a hook attachment. If you don't have that either, then you're gonna make fresh pasta by hand. But before we start, the question that everybody wanted to hear, Morongo Casino Resort and Spa, myself, and on behalf of the entire marketplace by Fabio Viviani, we are almost ready to rock and roll. We are about two short months away-ish from the opening, which will happen sometime in early May. So if you are from South Cal Southern California or from California, from anywhere in the world, and you want to spend a couple of days hanging out with me at a beautiful resort in the middle of a phenomenal landscape on the, on the uh, what's that, Palm, Palm Desert, Cabazon. It's Cabazon, California. I'm going to need some help here. It's Cabazon, Cabazon, California. It's gorgeous setting, nested in the mountain, Morongo Resort and Casino. And I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. Probably, um, Emily, when, when am I there? When, when am I going there? April? First weekend of April. First weekend of April. I'm going to be there in person if you guys want to hang out with me for a little bit. If not, I'm going to seek to see you during the opening in the month of May. So follow my Instagram, stay tuned, and we're going to let you know how and when we're going to be there popping bottle and celebrating. All right. So now, what do I have right here? Very simple. I'm assuming that if you're cooking along, you do have the ingredients. What I have is a pot of boiling water. Now that, that is basically nothing else than water with a little bit of salt in it, all right? I'm gonna add a little pink salt to it. And I have a, a little bit wider saute pan right here, kind of deeper, because that's the pan where I am going to do the lobster sauce. Then I have food processor. Again, guys, if you were waiting for me to teach you how to make fresh pasta by hand, not gonna happen. There is plenty of video out there that you can watch for an hour and figure that one out. It's nothing complicated. You just gotta mix eggs, flour, a little bit of oil, salt, and pepper. So let's do that in a quick and easy way. In the food processor, mixing eggs, flour, eggs, flour, salt, pepper, and olive oil will only take five minutes. If you do have a stand-up mixer like this, with a hook attachment, it will take you 10 minutes. If you make it by hand, it will take about 25 to 30, 
to get a consistency of it. Also, if you have any question, please use the chat. Type your question in the chat and you and I can have a conversation, all right? Emily is ready to ask a bunch of questions. So now let's talk about eggs. For some reason, my chicken are lazy. It's winter. I mean, look, 10 degrees outside, I wouldn't wanna, I wouldn't wanna lay eggs anyway. But my Easter egger, they're doing great. So my Easter egger are very hardy chicken that they make beautiful blue eggs. I don't think you're gonna see blue eggs because I have blue lights in the kitchen. So these look like very whitish to you. But the reality is that my layers, they're doing beautiful blue eggs these days. See, this is blue, this is white. So you kind of, you kind of see it, right? So, but they're small. Easter eggs are, are usually small. So instead of doing the usual, um, the usual three, four eggs, I'm gonna do five eggs, fresh pasta, all right? So five eggs, fresh pasta. What do we do with this now? Well, very simple. First of all, before the eggs, we're gonna add the flour to the canister. Now, I have smaller eggs. Per egg, per egg, I usually add four Italian tablespoons of flour. What is an Italian tablespoon of flour? An Italian tablespoon of flour, it's not an official measurement, but is what we do in Italy because in Italy we don't measure. So this is the closest things of us measuring without measuring. I know it's a little tricky, but follow me, all right? So what do we do here is very simple. We're gonna get the spoon, stick a, a, a soup spoon into the flour and take out anything you like. Now I have five small eggs. So I'm gonna only need about three spoon per egg. So 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Bobby, so, we, have a, we have a couple questions about the flour, if you have a minute. I would love to, please. Um, Deborah is asking what kind of flour. It's a double zero white cheap flour. Italians are cheap date. Now, Italian are expensive in general. Ferrari, Barolos, Brunellos, Gucci, Prada, Ferragamo, Dolce, Gabbana, all these fancy things we have. But in, 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 uh, 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 in your souls, you know that when you're Italian, you're a cheap date. You don't use fancy ingredients. So purpose, all purpose white flour is plenty. And by the way, now I have that and I'm gonna crack my eggs into it. Emily, next question. Okay, so on the same subject, Kay was asking, is finely ground flour just as good? Finally ground flour? I have no idea what that is, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'll Finally ask. ground flour sounds like you're buying your flour from an Amish mill in the hill of Philadelphia, and they have a big stone ground, which I guess technically is fine, but you're not gonna be able to, you're not gonna be able to, um, hand ground flour, if that's what you're referring to. I haven't seen it much since the 18th centuries, and I wasn't even around in the 18th century, so I've never seen it. I know meals, but usually they're commercial meals. So if for fine ground, you mean double zero, that's the flour you, you, you want to use, right? If for fine ground, you mean that somebody in your life is actually grinding flour by hand with a little meal, no, that's not gonna work probably because it's not fine enough, right? And I, I could be wrong, but that's, that's my guess. Or if you wanna expand on your question, I can answer more precisely. Any more question, Emily? Yes. Um, Rebecca was asking, how long do you rest the pasta dough? I really don't. I'm a hungry person. So the less amount of time between me and pasta, pass, the better. I understand that grandma, usually folklore, food network especially tells you that you always have to rest your pasta. Not true. You could rest if you have something else to do. Pasta is pasta, doesn't go to sleep. And especially if you knead it well, and if you use a food processor for it, which is even faster than kneading, you don't need any resting to develop the gluten. It's 
There is no difference. Let's call it for what it is. But people say there is. And I'm going to let them have it because you do you, boo, right? So I don't care. You do you. I don't rest my pasta. I don't care. Now, what do we do here? Oh, I forgot the oil. Almost forgot the oil. Almost forgot the oil. A little tiny bit of oil. That's it. All right? Look at this. So now what do I do? I'm going to explain it to you because it might get a little loud. So now I'm going to move these and mix these until I obtain a dough. If when you try at the first round of flour, the dough is too wet after three, four minutes, too wet, it's sandy, you can't touch it. You wanna add a couple of tablespoons of water. Dry dough, sandy dough requires water. If the dough is too sticky and it feel like gooey, sticky dough, then you wanna add flour. Moist, wet dough require more flour to dry it out, all right? So here's what I'm gonna do right now. So now my dough, it is very, very sandy, all right? It is sandy to the point that it's kind of, it's almost too sandy. Look at this. See, it's dusty. It's too dusty. So what do we do here if this is too dusty? We're going to add, the, I mean, mine is very dusty. So might as well, I add the, another egg to it, right? But if it's a little bit dusty, if it's like a little bit wet, then you can absolutely add the, more water. You can add more water or a little bit of broth if you have it or the pasta water, doesn't matter, all right? So now if you see here, there is a lot of wet. There is a lot of wet around the edges of the bowl. So instead of adding more flour or more water, if it's too dry or too wet, make sure that you mix the dough that you have well before you make that decision, all right? We have a couple of questions. Please. Um, Deborah is asking, what is the worst thing you can do to your dough to ruin it? Overcook it once you shape your pasta. Okay. You don't want to overcook your pasta. That's, that's a capital sin. And by the way, I told you my eggs are very small. So I'm gonna add more eggs to my pasta because they are, they're about half of the size of the damn eggs. So now I'm gonna add a little bit more, pot, more, uh, more eggs right here. And hopefully the pasta is gonna get nice and doughy like it should be already. Any more questions? Yes, um, Kathy was asking if you added salt already. Uh, yes, I add a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt to the pasta dough, yes. Okay, and Melody would like to know how much olive oil did you add approximately? How much? What is <laughs> How much? What's, what's the name of the lady? Mello. Mello. Melody. Melody. Melanie. Melanie. I'm Italian. I don't know how much olive oil I have added. I add a little bit. Well, Fabio, a little bit. How much is a little bit? It's a little bit, Melanie. It's a little bit. Maybe a tablespoon, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. How much do you love olive oil? Add a little more. Nobody cares. Look at there. All right, so as you can tell now, the dough, it is still wet, but you can almost try you can almost try to shape it. And yet, uh, I'm gonna still need more wet. Look at this. My eggs are so small in this case that they did not come out right. No, but for real, guys, they, look at how tiny these eggs are. They're tiny little chicken. They're not motivated. I gotta add another egg. By the way, if you keep adding eggs and you run out of eggs, you can replace eggs with water. 
But the point is, it is easy to make pasta with a food processor because there is nothing to do. All right. Look at that. Now it's starting to grab everything. And now the pasta is almost ready. One last scrap, scraping the size a little bit one last time, mix everything in the food processor. So there is no mess on your counter. There is no mess on your table. There is no mess in your kitchen. Done. So now, what to do with this? Well, I'll show you right now. What do we do right now is very simple. We're gonna get the canister. We're gonna get the canister. We're gonna empty these. So we're gonna get the canister. Now, once you empty, the, um, the canister of the dough, you might have a little runners around, meaning you could have some pasta that is not perfectly fine on the bottom, but worry about it. You don't need to, um, you don't need to have a perfect, perfect dough because also stretching the dough is gonna help bring everything together, right? So now, look at this. We have a couple questions when you're Please. ready. Um, Jacqueline was asking, she said, tell me about jars. When does it open? I'm so excited. Jars is a dessert concept that was created by me and by my need of serving absolutely outstanding and stunning dessert in an easy to eat format. I'm out there, I'm eating donuts, bomboloni, I'm eating I'm eating like uh, shakes, I'm eating old cupcake, I'm eating bun cake, I'm eating cookies. And then the best dessert in the world, they don't come in a friendly format for takeout. Most of the best dessert in the world have slice of things. So I said, why don't I come up with a concept that will feature the top 100 dessert in the United States? You name it, we have it. Served packed into a jar with a bunch of fun on top. We're going to open the first location in the West Loop in probably three, four months from now, Burbs of Chicago, West Loop. Now, all right, so look, I said it. I don't need to rest my dough unless you have to do something, right? So the dough is right here. I put my dough under a, a towel. The towel is a little wet, so it doesn't get, uh, it doesn't get dry, right? Now I'm gonna get another towel, and this should be a throwaway towel. This should be a towel that you can throw away, all right? And here's, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use lobster. Now I don't buy lobster meat, I buy lobster tail. Um, it's a better product. It's not necessarily frozen lobster. And even if sometimes frozen lobster is perfectly fine, depending what you do with it, right? But I, of course, I have a bunch of restaurants, I get fresh lobster. What do you do with fresh lobster? Well, what do you do with fresh lobster? It's easy. You put them on a towel like this, tail, 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 and you cut these in half. Hey, Fabio, we have a question about pasta dough before we get too far past that. Please. Um, Deborah is asking, is it better to add moisture with eggs than water? Well, yes and no, meaning look, um, and I'm going to explain it to you in a way that is going to be a very efficient answer and quick. You have a whole eggs. You can add as little as a teaspoon of pasta water. Sometimes you don't need a whole eggs worth of moisture. Sometimes only you need a couple of tablespoons of water. So it's, it's the eggs are always better, but you got to need some real moisture to keep adding eggs to it. Instead, sometimes you just need a little bit extra, and then that's when water is perfectly fine. All right, so now look at this. I got lobster tail, 
half, half, half and half, half. I'm gonna get three more here. And we're gonna cut these three more in half. And it's important that you cut them in half because you want the, you want, you want the, the, the juices to get released once the meat cooks inside the broth, inside the tomato with the white wine. So you have a nice lobster sauce, all right? So now I'm gonna get this lobster for now and I'm gonna leave it there. And now they're cut, all right? And if you have loose lobster meat, now it's the time to get it either out the refrigerator or to get that ready to be cooked. All right, so now the second most important thing is to figure it out that lobster cooks a lot faster than pasta. Lobster cook incredibly faster than uh, incredibly faster than pasta. So the idea is to prepare the base for the sauce while leaving the lobster last. Also lobster is a very delicate meat. So you don't need to cook the lobster for too long. Very gentle cooking. So now how do we do a nice lobster sauce? So we're gonna start by turning the fire on underneath your pan on probably, look, this is about, this is medium low. I would say medium low. Then we're gonna add a good amount of olive oil in the pan. And when I say a good amount of olive oil, I mean it. I'm not done yet. Not done yet. We have a quick question. Please. Perry wants to know what is the difference between fresh store-bought pasta and dry pasta? All right. Fresh and dry pasta can be store-bought. Dry pasta is never fresh. Fresh pasta is never dry. Now, it sounds like a silly answer, but that's a reality. So if I was shaping this pasta, put it on a shell and sell it to you for $10 a pound, you would be buying fresh pasta. If I was extruding these out of a machine making penne or ricchiette, butterfly, fusilli, spaghetti, dehydrate that in, in hot boxes and sell it to you dry, you would be dry pasta, eating, buying dry pasta. If I was selling you pasta out of the back of my truck, you would buy dry or fresh pasta out of the back of a truck. If those two type of pasta sit in a store, that store bought pasta. Don't get confused, my friend. It's all the same. Different stages, different places, but all the same indeed. So now I got the hot oil here. I'm gonna get a handful of garlic, a real handful. Like I'm, I'm getting basically a handful of garlic. Smash it. Smash the garlic, look at that. Smash it. And then I'm gonna add these to the oil. There. So what we do now, well, what we do now, we let these cook. We let this cook for a couple of minutes. We have a few questions when you're ready. Please. Um, Deborah is asking any thoughts about using induction cooking versus gas? Any thoughts about using an iPad instead of a solar calculators? Different time, different application, same result. Heat is heat. I prefer flame because if, you know, if I have to, if I, have, if I was born again, I'd probably be like a bushwhacker or something in the, in, in out in the like a survival mode out there. So clearly I'm not gonna have induction around me, but there is nothing wrong with induction cooking. It's just like, for me, it feels like cooking things on top of an iPad. Um, as long as you can caramelize garlic and make sauce with it, it doesn't matter. You could be at a, you could be at a campfire. You could cook on top of a dragon breathing flame. Heat is heat, 
right? The difference is that if I hold my hand like this on top of a live fire, I'm going to burn myself. If I hold my hand like this on top of an induction burner, chances are I'm not getting burned because there is no real flame. And most newer, most newer um, appliances have mechanisms that unless there is a friendly induction pen on it, the thing doesn't even turn on, which is a, it's a shame for a chef because I move my pen all the time. And if the damn thing goes off every time I lift it, 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 it mess my things up and I'm not happy. So here's what we do now. We got the garlic. I'm gonna add the tomato to it. Right there. I'm gonna add the tomato to it. And then here's what I'm gonna do. All right, I'm gonna add the tomato. I'm gonna add the little bit of pepper. I'm gonna add the little bit of salt. And what I'm gonna do there, I'm gonna put a lid on it. A lid on it for, until the, until the tomato kind of bubbles, bubbles. And now the fire is like medium low, right? So I'm gonna let my tomato bubble. And the reason being is because what I wanna do, as soon as the tomato bubble, I wanna scoop out the lobster meat. I wanna sit the lobster meat in the pan in the pan and turn the fire off. Basically, I wanna to start to gently cook the lobster with the residual heat from the pan. Now, you have two options. If you have an accessory like this, or if you have a little hand cranky. This is, by the way, this is a pasta roller attachment for my KitchenAid. This goes right here. This goes right there, right here, and right there, right? This goes right there. Basically, I'm gonna roll my pasta into it, feed it underneath, grab it, and then we can cut it, easy stretch. What if you don't have these? Well, if you don't have these, you only have two options to be able to make fresh pasta. Option number one is that, um, option number one is that you don't stretch pasta because I wouldn't suggest you to do it with the rolling pin like grandma does. So in that case, you make orecchiette, which is little ear shaped pasta, which I'm gonna show you how to make it in a second. That's a good option. If you can stretch your pasta, don't go crazy. Don't try to roll it with the rolling pin. Don't be the hero that nobody needs. It, we don't need that. You don't need to do that anymore. Grandma doesn't even care. She just likes to eat, okay? So don't be like, no, I'm gonna make my grandma proud and do that. It's a waste of time and it's a waste of oxygen. You buy something like this, $50, or you buy a little hand cranking machine that you can staple to you, no staple, that you can cl clump to your table and that works too for rolling the pasta. If you don't have that, just make orecchiette, which does not require any stretching, which I'm gonna show you now how to do it, right? So this is when you have, if you have the roller, the pasta roller, well, that's easy because we're gonna roll the pasta in a, in a second. But let's say that you don't have the pasta roller, how do you do it? Fabio, what do I do if I don't have the pasta roller? Well, if you don't have the pasta roller, let me show you what we do. If you don't have any pasta roller, you're gonna get your dough, I'm gonna move my, my ring out of my hand, all right? So if you don't have your pasta roller, we're gonna roll a little piece of pasta like this. We're gonna make one long little tube like this. And you're gonna cut little tiny dumpling, about a half inch per half inch, like that. Then you're gonna flip them upside down, flat part up, like this, like that, all right? Flat part up, like that, ready? Then what do we do? You go here and you press them like this with your thumb and you wiggle, and you wiggle, and you wiggle, and now we're making orecchiette. Fresh orecchiette, you don't need the pasta stretcher. 
to make Italian fresh orecchiette. Look at that. Fabio, we have several questions when you're ready. Please go for it. Okay, both Mary and Andy are asking about your favorite olive oil. My favorite olive oil is called Maolina. It comes from the Tuscan Hill from a friend of mine. Let me show you. This is the best olive oil that Italy has to offer, Maolina. Now, you're not gonna remember this, and even if you Google it, you're not gonna be able to buy it. How do you do that, Fabio? Easy. If you go, Emily, can you put, actually, you know, I'll do it. I'm gonna put a phone number on it. All right, this is my cell phone number. I just put it in the chat. Now, before you are able to text me, you have to agree to allow me to text you back. So there is a small legal step to do when you text that number, which by the way, it is my cell phone. So if you text that number, you're gonna get an auto response that say, hello, it's Fabio. It's not really me, it's an auto response. That says, hello, it's Fabio. Fill up the contact information below to allow me to text you back. Because what happened in the past? I gave my, my cell phone number to a bunch of people for culinary trivias and advice. And then if you text me at six o'clock in the afternoon, but I see the message of one in the morning because I'm between five. I answer whenever I see the message, not be like, hmm, okay, uh, uh, Emily, uh, it's midnight. I'm not going to text you back right now. I totally do that. And I got a bunch of dudes getting upset about why you're giving my wife spaghetti advice at one in the morning. Who are you? And I'm like, I'm the chef she texted yesterday for spaghetti advice. With that said, we put a little system in place that you are allow me to text you back by saying, yo, yeah, this is my information, Fabio, text me back. And after that, it's me and you. So if you text that number that I just posted, which by the way, it's also the number in my Instagram bio, I'm gonna text you where to buy the olive oil and I'm gonna respond to you, any other question you have. And I would love to stay in touch with you. That's an easy way. So now we have the tomato that is basically cooked. Look at this, the tomato is basically cooked, all right? So what do we do here now? We turn it off and I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean the lobster meat inside like this and I'm gonna lay it, I'm gonna lay the meat into the hot sauce without turning the fire on any longer. I'm gonna turn the fire on later, a little bit later, not now, all right? Look at this, and some, some meat will just break and that's okay too. So now if you have lobster meat, which you should do, put it in the pan. All right. Fabio, there's a couple people asking about your favorite brand of canned tomatoes, if you wanna share that right now. Yeah, so I don't really have one, I explain you why. Um, I make, I have, I make so much tomato every year that I, I barely, barely use canned tomato unless I need some raw one. I use a canned tomato right now. I just bought a Costco, Costco tomato brand, San Marzano from God knows where. Now, Fabio, are you saying that there is no difference in quality of tomato? No, of course there is. There is shitty product everywhere. There is great tomato and there is shitty tomato, but I haven't bought an official brand of tomato in a very long time. What I can tell you is that usually the best one are from Italy. They feature some Marzano tomato and usually they have something that says low acidity on the bag or no sugar, no salt added, nothing, just tomato, straight up tomato. All right, so now let's look at this for a second. I'm gonna rinse my hands off really quick. So now what we do with that guys? Well, that's very simple. What are we doing there? It's basically, what are we doing here is basically let the tomato starting to steam our lobster and there is no fire underneath, not yet. All right, so we're gonna go there and we're gonna cover that. So that's cover. I always keep a towel soaked with 
warm water, and lemon juice. Love it. Love it. Especially when you touch seafood. So now what we do, we got the pasta boiling, we got the water boiling, and we got the lobster in here. The water is boiling, and now we're going to start to make pasta. Now, as you can tell, right here, I have orecchiette. Orecchiette is perfect for those that can't stretch the pasta. You cut little tube, you cut little tube, then what you do, you press them with your finger and you make orecchiette. That's cute, but tonight we're making ravioli. I gave you a solution in case you don't have the, the stretching pasta machine. Now, if you have witnessed anything I've ever done, you guys probably should have buy something that stretches pasta right now. That's how you really experience the full, uh, the full effect of the pasta forces. All right. So now let's do this. So we're going to get pasta. All right. You push this back a little bit. Fabio, we have a couple questions. Please. Um, Amelia is asking, can I order this dish at Siena Tavern? We will be yeah, in, you can in August and hope. To yes, you can you. order. You can order a very similar version. It's, it's called the lobster fettuccine, which is very similar to this, actually. Almost identical without the ravioli. It's now filled pasta, fettuccine. With More question, Emily. Yes. Joanne is asking um, if you've already put the white wine in the sauce. I have not put the white wine in the sauce. I'm going to put the white wine at last while when we are about to reduce at the very, very end. And for whatever white wine I'm using, a Pinot Grigio here, any brand will do. All right. So now, before I answer the next question, let's start to stretch the pasta. I'm going to put my machine to a two, to a three, actually. And we're going to start stretching. See that? Then we fold it. Now, if you have a pasta machine, there is a knob. The knob goes number from one to nine. I stretch it to the one because one, it's the thickest pasta. You don't want to go from raw to super thin. You'll not be able to do it. It's going to be gradual. So we do here, see that? Then we fold it again. By folding the pasta, you give it a good shape of the pasta cutter. See? Now we go from three to five. I'm going to fold it. And there you have it. Perfect. We have a nice pasta sheet right now. So what am I doing here? Let me show you what am I doing here. Very easy. I'm going to get my pasta to the counter, all right? My pasta to the counter, and I'm going to try to make pasta to the counter, and I'm going to try to get a square out at the end, all right? Then what am I doing here? I'm gonna add uh, a little bit of ricotta there, there. 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 And there. It'll be more than a teaspoon. A teaspoon of ricotta later, right? There. Then, what am I doing? It's easy. I'm gonna get a spoon. I'm gonna wet the spoon with the pasta water. And I'm gonna start to go around wetting the pasta like this. Okay. 
So what I'm doing here is, is something called, it's almost like washing the pasta, right? I'm using a little bit of pasta water to wet the pasta around the ricotta. Why do we do that? What well, we do there, so the pasta sticks better. And you don't need a lot of it, right? You just need to wet the pasta around the ricotta. So the pasta is wet right now. So what we do now, we're gonna fold this. Like this. I'm gonna fold it. And with your hand, two finger, you go in between, you go in between, right? And now we cut the ravioli. There, 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 and there. They're a little too long. You can cut them a little bit more. Look at that. Perfect. So now we have six beautiful ravioli. If you wanna make more, you just repeat the process. By the way, these little pieces of pasta, don't throw it away. Put it in the fridge and cook it tomorrow. It is perfect for minestra, soups, chicken noodles, anything. So now we get the ravioli and we press the sides like this. You gotta really squeeze the sides between your finger to smash the dough together, right? You gotta smash the dough together. We have a few questions when you're ready. Please. Um, Leslie is asking if you ever use um, store-bought already peeled garlic. Yeah, all the time. When I'm lazy, that's to go garlic for me. But I also grow garlic in my backyard. So I have a lot of fresh garlic, but you know, there is a lot of trick to peel fresh garlic um, really quick, 30, 40 bulbs at a time. It's very easy. So you can actually YouTube day, if you put two bowls, two metal bowl with 30, 40 garlic cloves unpeeled inside and you shake the bowl, almost like a metal container together, the garlic really peel itself, it's amazing. So there is almost no reason why you should buy peeled garlic, but I do it. Sometime again, I don't wanna deal with peeling garlic. So now what you do, you just basically keep smashing this, but I want your fingernail to be white when you smash it. You gotta really smash it, all right? Really, really smash that. So now, once you have nicely smashed ravioli, you turn the lobster on, on medium. Lobster won't take more than 10 minutes to cook. So now we have all the ravioli perfectly done here. All right, look at that. The ravioli are done. Then we have the lobster on it. As soon as, as soon as on a medium, actually, I'm gonna go medium high right now. As soon as these start to boil, that's when I'm gonna add a little bit of white wine. How much is a little bit? A little bit. Probably like a couple of ounces worth of uh, white wine. Like half a glass of white wine if you were drinking a proper glass of wine. Two, two and a half ounces. You see the bubble here, they starting to happen. See that? Bubbles are happening. Now I'm gonna get the wine. There. And I'm gonna bring it to a nice boil. Once that's brought to a nice boil, what I do, I'm gonna add the heavy cream. As soon as I add the heavy cream, I drop the pasta in the water. 
in five or six minutes that the pasta is going to be cooked, the sauce will start to reduce. And because of the addition of the heavy cream, it will be a much more gentle boil for the lobster tail and the Nagana overcooked or the lobster meat and is not gonna overcook, all right? Fabio, question. Please. Michael is asking what you do with all of that bourbon in your cabinet. Uh, well, few things. I am an avid collector of bourbons, whiskeys, tequilas, rye. Um, I have probably one of the largest private collection of whiskeys and bourbons in the United States. Um, and uh, we do, for all that, let me, let me answer you. Let me show you this first, and then I'll answer. You see how that is boiling? Cream goes in, and pasta goes in the water. So let's get back to Michael for a second for the next five minutes as I have to wait for the pasta to cook anyway, all right? So <clears throat> what I do with the bourbon? Well, I do a few things. First of all, I drink them. Not all, I have like 500 bottles would be impossible. Um, I do a few things. I do events for corporate. So corporate um, home dining in my own home. I live in the burbs of, of uh, Chicago. Um, I, have a, I built my, myself, me and my wife built a nice place and uh, we have a lot of land. So I have a couple of acres growing vegetables, chickens, and I have a basement in my house that I turn into an entertainment center for corporate. I also, what I do with my bourbon, I run one, if not the only really, um, chef-driven private estate member-only dinner club. So every year I put out uh, 250 invitation plus 250 guests. So if you, if you buy a membership, you can bring a guest with you for a small and additional fee. And basically these people get to do 10 events a year with me in person, two of which in my house, 2000 plus bottle wine cellar, incredibly oversized, absurd uh, collection of whiskeys, bourbon, tequilas, rum, gin. I got it all. I got barrel aging rooms, uh, all that. So when you buy the membership club, you get access to all the bourbon twice a year in my home with me cooking together, super fancy dinner, uh, you know, two weeks ago, we had one. We shipped lobster from Sardinia Island. We flew caviar from Iran, uh, Afghanistan saffron, um, Cuban cigars, all that stuff, right? It's a very nice event. And then you get two of those with the membership and the bourbons are all included in there. Of course, everything is, every cost is covered. And then during the year, we do another six or seven outside of my house event where we get together and those are also included in the membership program. So that's what I do with the bourbon. It's kind of a dual pleasure, purpose business pleasure, right? I buy them for business and I enjoy them for pleasure, but, but it's, it's business, you know? Bourbon is like golf, brings people together. That's what I do with my bourbon, but there is some, some delightful one if you're, ever, if you're ever interested. All right, look what's happening here, guys. The cream is cooking the lobster. The lobster is starting to curl. We are only minutes away from be ready. All right, so look at this. Look how crazy good this is. And I'm gonna let, you see how gentle, um, how gentle is the boil? The gentleness of the cream, it's perfectly cooking the lobster. Look at that. Tomato. Now, if you see there, also the ravioli is kind of floating already. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to get actually a, a I'm going to get one of these. All right. I'm going to go here. And now I'm going to finish the ravioli in my lobster sauce. And by the way, this is one of the many pasta dishes made in front of you that you guys will have the pleasure to eat at the marketplace in the Morongo Casino Resort and Spa 
opening that we're going to do together. Love Saravioli. Look at this. My God. Look at this. Fabio, we have a question. Please. How do you subscribe to the dinner club at your house? Got to be quick. <laughs> that's, that's how it works. You got to be really quick. So these are very special dinners, super high end. In 2019, before the dumpster fire of the uh, last two years we had in America, I don't know, maybe you were on a vacation for two years, but before the whole pandemic, COVID and all that, uh, my, my membership club dinner was the hottest dining ticket in the United States, the hardest dining ticket to find. How do you apply? Well, I'm about to put out 250 new membership available for the next round of dinners. And every year we confirm uh, a bunch of people more. So we ended up, you know, somebody doesn't reconfirm, somebody move out from whatever our state, somebody, I've got a bunch of people flying from New York, Miami, LA, for all this dinner, because they make the dinner an event to spend the weekend in Chicago. But how do you subscribe? You gotta be pay attention. Why do you have to pay attention? Because there is only 250 seats available and they go really quick. So if you if you text me, by the way, let me put let me put my number again. So you guys have an option to do it if you're quick. So the way this works is that oh nine oh five nine nine one. Five one two six. So uh, in about two, three weeks, a month, as soon as we have um, the finalized new website and program ready, uh, we're gonna put out an email blast. We're gonna put out tweet, Facebook. We're gonna promote the opening of the subscription for about two weeks. So we're gonna give you a date. For example, April 1st, if you go on this website, you can get in. First come, first serves. I only have a handful of people that I can't say no to, kind of my business partner, my, some of my wife's friends, people that if I say no to it, I, I'm not going to see the end of the day. But to make it fair, about 230 of those memberships, they're up for grab to the first come, first serve. That's how we keep it interesting. All right. So and basically, you know, you'll you'll subscribe, read the read whatever you get, pay, and then you're gonna get a fancy card that is a membership card. And then you're gonna have a concierge service that will talk to you and, and plan all the 10 dates around whatever else you wanna do in the Chicago area or New York or Miami or LA, whatever we get together for those events, plus the two in my very own home in uh, the burbs of Chicago. And if you come earlier than dinner time, you're going to be in the backyard with me picking tomato vegetable and catching chicken like Rocky. That's how you do it. All right. So let's look into here. Look at this. Look at this. Now, just imagine, guys, you are in line at the Mercato station inside the marketplace at Morongo in less than two and a half months. You're gonna be there. You're gonna smell the lobster. You're gonna smell the great pastas. Oh my God, they smell like delicious. I hope you guys cooking along because this shit's fire. Like it's crazy good. My God, this is good. Look at this. Oh, then now we're gonna get a little bit of parsley. A little bit of parsley. We're gonna chop a little parsley really quick. There, look at that. Gorgeous. Now we're gonna let these reduce for, look at this. Guys, you got my cell phone number there. There, you got my cell phone number. If you don't text me, if you don't do this, and you're missing out. Tell me another chef. Tell me one more chef out there that gives you the num cell phone number so we can text with each other. Tell me who. Unless you're Gordon Ramsay's cousin, you ain't get any chef cell phone number. You got mine. Test me, try me. That's it. 
Look at this pasta, by the way. Look at this thing. God, Lord, how good it looks. Look at that pasta. Look at that. Who made that? Look at that. This is what dreams are made of. Look at that. It looks, you know when something tastes good because it looks fantastic. Look at this thing. I have a lot of towels here. All right. Look at that. Perfect. Now we're gonna let it sit for a minute. We're gonna let the pasta sit for one minute because pasta has to rest. Pasta needs to rest. But not like the lady asked me how long you rest your pasta once the pasta dough is done. The pasta needs to rest in the sauce. I wish I was, uh, I was waiting for the pasta to rest at Morongo. I would have go and test my luck with blackjack. I'm pretty good at blackjack. Although it's pure luck, I'm pretty good at it. I'm pretty good with luck. So look at this. Look at this pasta for real people. Are, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Now we're gonna let the pasta rest two, three minutes. Any more question, guys? Yes, um, this, uh, this is actually from earlier and I'm interested in this answer too. How does one know, this is from Amy, how does one know the best type of pasta for different sauces or proteins? So like the shape or a keti spaghetti? There is only two kinds of pasta. Smooth, actually, I'm sorry. There is three kinds of pasta. Flat and smooth with ridges and hollow. Flat and smooth, spaghetti, fettuccine, pappardelle, tagliatelle. They usually go well with thicker pasta. Not a so runny pasta. Because a so runny pasta will just light off the surface of the pasta because it's smooth and, and, and clean and, and, and perfectly flat. Then there is the pasta with the ridges, like penne rigate, the gnocchi with the ridges, the cavatelli, they have the ridges, the rigatoni, they have the ridges. That pasta is good for literally everything from runny sauce, like a seafood, that you really got to cook the pasta in it to absorb it, to thicker pasta like a bolognese sauce. And then there is the easy pasta. The easy pasta is the fusilli, the cavatappi, the farfalle, the orecchiette, the cannelloni, the shell pasta, anything that if the damn things that hold the sauce inside, right? So if you go to your orecchiette pasta, all the, the hollow part of the orecchiette fills with sauce, right? So that it's kind of when you have a thinner, more liquid sauce, you want to cook pasta in the capture the sauce inside of it. If you have a smooth, thin pasta like a spaghetti, capellini, tagliatelle, fettuccini, pappardelli, all that, just get a nice thick sauce, fettuccini, bolognese. It's not, it's not casual that we put the bolognese, one of the thickest sauce with one of the thinnest, smoothest pasta. Italy knows, we do know. So that, and then the, the, the other stuff is in between. Question, please. Yes, uh, Kathy said, I didn't see you add sugar to the tomato sauce. Did you, or can I just leave it out? You can leave it out. I am sweet enough. Um, and by the way, sugar is always optional. Sugar, I feel like sugar goes with, Tomato sauce, like lemon goes with tea. It always put a little bit, but honestly, I don't, there is so little tomato sauce in here that doesn't matter. If I had a big pot of tomato, if this was tomato sauce, then I would have put a little sugar in it just to balance the acid. But just get the uh, extra sugar and just do whatever you want. More questions, please. Then we're going to plate that. Yes, I have one more. Um, Perry is asking, do you like storing lobster shells for stock? I do. As a matter of fact, I didn't throw it away. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to roast these in the oven with a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and some, some onions, some carrots on top, put them in the oven, roast the whole things. 
Then I'm going to add three gallons of water to a pressure cooker. And, and a pressure cooker with three gallons of water, I'm going to make a shellfish stock. And then I'm going to froze this, I'm going to freeze the stock in, uh, in about two cups, little freezer bags with the locking lid. So then I have shellfish stock. I don't throw away anything. And you know what I'm going to do with the actual shell? I'm going to grind the shell once they're dry out of the oven, out of the pot. I'm going to let them dry. Then I'm going to grind them probably with a, with a food processor, with a blade attachment, with a dull blade. I'm going to crush them and I'm going to throw it to my chickens. Chicken use grits to digest their food. So they oyster shell, uh, little pieces of marble and rocks. They eat that with their food. So in the geezer, they grind their food. That's what I do. All right, guys, let's play these. Let's play these. Look at these things, people. My Lord. My Lord. Look at that. Look at this. Hey, Fabio, just put some sauce if you want to. Ah, look at that. All the sauce, all of it. Look at that. All the absolute sauce on it. Look at that. This is for me and my wife to share. Look at this thing. Are you kidding me? Morongo Resort Spa and Casino. Or Casino Resort and Spa. Just like they like me to say. It. What I'm going to do, I'm going to see you all in person. Middle of April sometime. Let's figure it out. And then I'm going to go and we're going to open the venue sometime early May. And I'm going to see all of you out there. In the meantime, I love you people very much. Please. Don't be a fool. Text my cell phone. Let's stay in touch. If you are in the Chicagoland area or don't mind to do a weekend out of town, I highly consider to jump on the opportunity to see if you can get into the estate dinner. I always love to meet you guys. I love to have amazing food, amazing drink with you. And I can't wait to see you for the next uh, cooking class. God bless you. Stay safe. Stay free. Let's go. You guys enjoy your night. I love you very much. I can't wait to see you in person at Morongo or here, whichever come first. Enjoy your love you guys. Happy Sunday. Have a good night, everybody.